grass crop the next year. Hmm. It'll increase the organic matter. It'll require less water to grow the same amount of grass. There's a, a bunch of really cool stuff that happens with food that goes into the ground. Hmm. But it needs to be spread properly. It needs to be moved. So what we do with this electric fence is we're replicating that. And the reason that they go into herds is because they have no defense against predators. When you look at bison, yeah, they've got all kinds of coyotes. They've got mountain lions, bobcats, all kinds of big animals that are in the problem. So they go in these tight herds. We want them to just graze off this whole 10 acre field. We want them to be in this little section for one, Scott, how, how long are they going to be in here? One day. So they'll be in here for 24 hours. They're going to graze this grass down. You can kind of see where they come from just before. Okay, see how this kind of looks like a mower came through? That's where they were probably this morning. Oh. Yeah, yeah so they moved off of that spot this morning. You see how it looks like it's mowed off? There's a lot of nice manure in the ground right there. And they moved them into here using that electric fence. Like all that's doing is replicating nature, all right? We're also doing all this to help with air quality, water quality. We don't need to use worming agents or any kind of wormers because they're all electric all the time. That's the basic principle. We're moving here all the time. Aww. Yeah, so that's the basic principle. Moving on to this spot, put them here. Lots of fresh grass. They get as much grass as they can possibly eat. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the breeds. So this is a dairy cow. She's a Jersey. That's an A2 type milk. Most people that are lactose intolerant can actually handle this kind of milk. It's closer to like a goat milk kind of profile. We're actually not currently milking her because we had some bad experiences getting gored in the side with those horns. Uh, and we're going to wait until we have put different labels on it, but it's all grass. But the way that beef works in the U.S., is they're raised out in the hills, usually in the Midwest somewhere, until they're big enough, they're about a thousand pounds to go to the feedlot. They get sold at the auction, then they go to the feedlot for three months. They'll feed them grain, you know, corn and soybeans, give them a lot of antibiotics because they get sick in that environment, and then they'll slaughter when they hit the right weight. The American Grass Fed Association, when they came up with a with a label for grass fed, they said, Well, like I can't eat liver, I can't eat sheep. Afterwards, let's talk about it because you can eat it. Because I didn't think I could eat grass-fed beef when I got here. It was just the industry. I thought I like 40-day dry-aged ribeye. And I came down here, and you know, every time I go back to, you know, every time I go back to my old job, I'm not going to say names, but I cannot eat a New York steak that is not grass-fed. And that's the sad truth. Is once you actually acquire the taste, that's what real beef is supposed to taste like. We've been chasing by dry aging or by adding different agents. We've been actually like chasing that flavor, but it but it occurs naturally. So. That's good. Amen. I want to talk a little bit about the lambs program. So one of the things you have probably heard, if you haven't done agriculture before, even if you have, is the lambing season. Oh my God, lambing! You're up all night, bottle feeding these lambs, doing the vaccines, doing the antibiotics, you know, the whole nine yards, right? The other cool thing about following nature's lead is that you get to reap the benefits of that too, which is a lot less work in certain ways too. So the way that we do our lambing program, we leave a male in with a female. It's kind of weird, but uh, one male can technically service 40 females. Uh, we come out in the morning, there's lambs on the ground, and we don't touch them. You know? When you have healthy animals with good immune system, they have home birds, sorry, we call it home birds. They, they just give birth right here in the pasture. Um, we don't have to do any assistance. Most of these sheep have never even been touched by a human hand. There's a few with stock tails. That's the original stock that we bought, like back in 2013. Other than that, there's no reason for us to touch these animals. We'll take the males for harvest if we need them or if we want them. Other than that, it's basically a hands-off thing. We don't pull the lambs. We don't stay up all night with them. These moths know what to do. They're healthy, they're active, they're out here exercising all the time. It's a really, really easy program. So I think that speaks volumes, not that we're great or anything, it's just that nature really knows what it's doing, and if you just let nature take care of the animals, we do the grass, you know? We call ourselves, like, we stole Joel South and say, we're grass farmers. We raise the grass, we provide the environment, nature does the rest. So that's, uh, that's the simple and easy program. We don't do much. The sheep are a lawnmower for our chicken. Our chicken is the big thing that we do. Um, that's our key kind of staple crop that we do here in the poultry. Usually every single one of those metal things, that's called a chicken tractor. They would have 80 or so meat chickens in them. They're going to be moved every single day to fresh pasture. This will have five, 600 chickens. Scott, farming question. How do you
decide how much space you want to give them. There they go, over there. Is if it's an area of bad patch, we had some areas that were like not regenerating as fast as others, so you're going to want to add more fence in that second. And sometimes it could be a really good pasture, and you're going to leave it for two days or a day and a half. Sometimes it's like you know marginal pasture. Yeah, they're real big. Okay. Yeah, there's more pigs up 